With hundreds of tabletop board and card games released, revitalized, announced, and crowdfunded each month, several inevitably capture our collective attention. These are the top 10 games that recently stood out to us at Watch It Played and are now on our radar. Hi, I'm Paula Deming. In On The Radar, we count down the new, old, and noteworthy games that captured our attention this month and discuss why they caught our eye. Before we begin our list of carefully curated cardboard, I wanted to mention that this episode is made possible, in part, by the expansions for Stonemeyer Games. Seriously, like, all of them. Heighten your gaming experience in Euphoria. Weave new layers into tapestry. Spread your wings with the European and Oceana expansions for Wingspan. I'm quickly running out of puns, but uh, let's say, uh, demonstrate your civic pride with the Between Two Cities Capitals expansion. Um, don't ignore the Euphoria Ignorance is Bliss expansion and experience some Vita culture shock with the visit from the Rhine Valley and more visitors expansions. <laughs> Saved it at the end there. In total, 16 different expansions are available on the Stonemeyer Games website, and Watch It Played viewers will receive a 21% discount for orders placed online from March 15th through the 22nd by using the promo code WATCHIT21 during checkout. Follow the link in this video's description and start expanding your gaming experience today. The first game on our radar this month is one of Rodney's raves, Cantaloupe Book One Breaking into Prison, a direct adaptation of point-and-click computer adventure games featuring an interactive story driven by puzzle solving and exploration. In this first part of what is intended to be a Cantaloupe trilogy, players embody the small-time criminal Oz Hook Carpenter, who has just returned from exile and is seeking revenge. But revenge is easier said than done, so Hook will need to assemble a team of people with a unique set of skills if he wants even the slightest chance to succeed. As I mentioned, this game is one that Rodney is looking forward to. I sat down with him recently to discover why. Well, it's called a point-and-click adventure game, isn't it? What does that even mean? How could it not be on my radar? Frankly, I'm dying of curiosity. At first I thought it was leprosy, but it was just curiosity. Mm-hmm. Yes. Fascinating. Apparently much of the game is hidden behind that red overlay stuff that you can't really see until you put a red filter on top of it. Like you'd find in a cereal box spy toy or something. You know what I mean? A Flinderson decoding matrix. Is that what that's called? No, it's not. I totally just made that up. You only reveal a section once you've discovered a secret code through your adventuring, or by combining items that you collected to gain new codes. It's a once and done type of game, but its components aren't destroyed as you play. I Meaning you can pass the game on to somebody else when you're done. Could someone still destroy it as they go if they wanted to? Yes, I believe the product is still being made out of destructible materials for those so inclined. Nice. Right? Can I stay for dinner? No. I'll see myself out. Game number nine is one of Chaz's choices, Bloodstone from Druid City Games. In Bloodstone, players control a character that's in pursuit of, you guessed it, the Bloodstone, a powerful relic that enchants those who possess it. Each character uses a custom dice mechanism to determine their attacks and movements of their miniature as they engage in combat. I recently sat down with Chaz to find out why he covets this game about coveting the mystical artifact. Well, Bloodstone's artwork and background story really intrigued me, and I thought that they were doing some really exciting things on social media with it too, such as live streaming a playtesting session with backers. I was intrigued, but still, really, you know, I felt I didn't really know much about the game itself. And actually, based on some of the responses to the game's campaign that I saw, I don't think I was alone in that sentiment. And then, suddenly, Skybound canceled the Kickstarter to retool the project. Well, I heard the Kickstarter was canceled because of an error found in the game's Flinderson decoding matrix. I totally just made that up. Now, the publisher could have trudged forward with the campaign, planning to you know, resolve the issues that they were receiving feedback on over the course of the game's development. But ultimately, they instead decided to pull the plug and relaunch the campaign later. Which, you know, actually, you know, I, I think was a commendable decision in this case. You know, and I'm still excited to revisit the game when it returns.
You can't stay for dinner. Okay, that's that one. Next up is a game that's Matthew's cup of tea, Cora, Rise of an Empire, in which players rule a resplendent city in ancient Greece. The race is on to develop your Grecian grounds faster and better than your opponents. The political choices players make each round will determine the city's livelihood as it grows, as will philosophy, legislation, culture, trade, and military developments. I recently invited myself over for brunch with Matthew to find out why he selected Cora, Rise of an Empire. I toast Cora, Rise of an Empire because ancient Greece is my jam. Are we talking about the game or what we're having for brunch? The game, yeah, I look forward to optimizing my dice rolls, collecting taxes, sending my army to foreign lands, unlocking achievements, optimizing my friendless and decoding matrix to establish a city that will persevere and shine throughout all of Greece for time eternal. Would you like to stay for dinner? What are we having? Well, inspired by Cora, Rise of an Empire, Greece, Toast and jam. Grease. And that's authentic gopher blood black pudding you're tasting. You can really taste the road. Next up is one of my personal Paula's picks. Cora Quest, a cooperative family dungeon crawling game for one to four players ages six and up. Cora Quest is designed to be a game that kids and grown-ups can play together and get equal amounts of fun from. It's also a game that sparks creativity, providing encouragement and guidance on how to create heroes, monsters, and adventures. I recently sat down with myself to find out more about why I picked this game. This game caught my eye because it's being designed by an eight-year-old, Dan Hughes and his daughter, Cora. How does an eight-year-old already have a daughter? No, no, uh, Dan's daughter Cora is eight. Dan is at least, I don't know, 14? Mm-hmm, yes, fascinating. The game started as a school project and over time evolved into a real, actual game that is really fun to play. And it recently completed a Kickstarter campaign, which did extremely well. In fact, they unlocked stretch goals to have Matthew and I each write adventures for it. We both know Dan because he started the podcast that Matthew and I are on, This Game is Broken. It sounds like you and Dan are very close. Uh, I guess you could say that. Do you know if he's accepting dinner guests? He already invited me over for dinner. Wait, how could you not include me? I tried calling, but you didn't answer your phone. Because I was on the phone calling myself. Well, you missed a fantastic tuna fish casserole. But I'm definitely allergic to seafood. I wish you'd been there to warn me. Next up is another of my personal picks, The Initiative, coming from Unexpected Games and designed by Corey Knizia. This is a unique cooperative story-based game of strategy and code-breaking taking place in the mid-90s after a mysterious board game called The Key was discovered by a group of kids at a garage sale. Players will help the game's characters through a pivotal chapter of their lives by following a series of missions linked together in an interactive comic book. I recently sat down with Paula to find out more about why I picked this game. Now, Paula, isn't it true that one thing that intrigues me about the initiative is that the game's campaign is broken into a series of 30 to 60 minute chapters where players will be working together to crack encoded clues? I, uh, I don't... I was too busy recovering from seafood poisoning to research your reasons. Mm-hmm. Yes. Fascinating. But I do know that the story advances even if players fail a mission, but winning may earn them a future advantage. Each chapter builds on the knowledge and story of the previous chapters, weaving narrative, code-breaking, and mystery into a unique game system. I believe that system is called the Flenderson Decoding Matrix. Now you're just repeating things we've already said. Mm-hmm. Yes. Fascinating. This may be a good point to take a break to mention that this episode was also made possible in part by Lawyer Up from Rock Manor Games. Lawyer Up is a two-player asymmetrical card game in which players take on the roles of attorneys facing off against each other in a variety of gripping courtroom cases. One player, as the prosecution, makes their case against the other player, the defense. Each case uses a unique set of mechanisms to set the stage for cases ranging from murder to racketeering. Lawyer Up is a game of arguments, influence, and strategies. 
Players start with Discovery, where they will go through all of a case's evidence and draft the items that they think will be critical for them to outmaneuver their opponent. Then, the astute attorneys call and question witnesses, chain cards together to build arguments, and, hopefully, sway the biases of the jury toward their side of the argument and win the case. Follow the link in this video's description to find Lawyer Up on Rock Manor Games' website or at your own friendly local game store soon. The top half of the second half of our list starts off with the rival networks from Formal Ferret Games, selected by Matthew. This is a standalone two-player version of the networks in which players manage the programming schedule of a television station. Much of the original's gameplay is preserved, but streamlined so that it plays in 30 to 45 minutes. Your station's time slots will be filled with different offbeat shows of various values and, hopefully, improve as your range of programming and viewership grows. Chaz recently sat down with Matthew to find out more about why he picked this game. Um, I understand that one of your recent picks was the Rival Networks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. I recently played it on Tabletopia and loved it. Now that's, that's a very strong statement. Uh, was it merely a string of phonetic sounds randomly strung together that have no actual meaning? Not at all. I loved the original and this is a great re-implementation. Hmm, yes. Fascinating. Wow, Paula is much better at this than you are. Well, Paula hasn't been available since I bought her sushi for lunch. Chaz chose the game in spot 4, Battle Bears, the board game, based on the mobile game Battle Bears. In Battle Bears, up to six players, pursued by a horde of explosive zombie teddy bears with only enough supplies to allow one player to escape, must fight to the death using their own unique abilities and the random weapons and equipment they discover. Matthew recently sat down with Chaz to find out more about why he picked this game. So, I understand that one of your recent picks was Battle Bears, the board game. Oh, yeah, yes, that's right. I recently saw it on Kickstarter and I loved it. I'm going to back it. But surely the game's Kickstarter was cancelled and can't be backed. Well, no, I... Well, that's not so much a statement as merely a string of phonetic sounds that have been strung together that have no actual meaning. However, even after cancelling the Kickstarter, citing concerns with delays caused by supply chain issues and COVID, the publisher, Oom um Games, decided to still produce the game on their own anyway, even without running a Kickstarter campaign to finance it. And now, sans le Kickstarter, the game has been developed and is available to pre-order on Oom's um website. Paula is much better at being interviewed. Well, Paula hasn't been available since I, since I bought her calamari for lunch. Rodney was drawn to the next game on our list, Maglev Metro from Bezier Games. In Maglev Metro, utilize state-of-the-art magnetic levitation technology to build a metropolitan rail system, transporting workers and robots beneath the city. What are those robots up to beneath the city? Don't worry about that. I'm sure that's of no concern. Instead, concentrate on replacing the aging Manhattan and Berlin subway systems with newer, faster, quieter technology. Because your eventual robot masters would appreciate some peace and quiet. Rodney recently sat down alone to find out more about why he picked this game. I understand that one of my recent picks was Maglev Metro. Fascinating. So. If I'm understanding correctly, the thing that caught my attention when I first saw the game at Gamma in 2020 was the transparent tiles that allow your route to overlap your opponent's tracks, that create new paths from station to station, and how the key to success is efficiently exercising the game's pickup and deliver tile laying engine building mechanics, which by the end of the game will have morphed the board into a modern subway map with brightly colored routes connecting stations all over the city. Interesting. No, you may not stay for dinner. The penultimate game on our collective list this month is Lions of Lydia from Bellwether Games, which takes place in a pivotal moment in history after the Kingdom of Lydia has just minted the world's first gold coin. Coins will soon become the dominant medium of monetary exchange, supplanting multi-tiered trading and bartering so complex it requires a Flinderson decoding matrix. 
Lions of Lydia is a bag management and engine building game in which influential leaders send merchants out to barter for resources so they can increase their land holdings. To achieve victory, players must manage the merchants in their bag and complement their abilities with the cards in their tableau. Matthew recently sat down with Half a Loaf of Bread to find out more about why he picked this game. So, there's an underlying engine in this game that runs on basic resources that the players will produce, but failing to convert those resources into coins will prevent that player from being able to obtain the most valuable cards. So there's a balancing act that must be achieved in order to win. Wouldn't you say that's a tough decision, half a loaf of bread? I'm sorry, what was that? I'm sorry, I, st I still didn't catch that. Oh, I see. Good question. No, I didn't go in for the Kickstarter, but I do think the game has the makings of a modern classic. You're still a better interviewer than Chaz. And the game at the top spot this month made blips on both Chaz and my radars, Cubitos from AEG, in which players participate in the annual Cube Cup, a race of strategy and luck to determine the Cubitos champion. Each player has a runner on the racetrack and a support team, which is represented by dice. Each turn, the dice are rolled and their results are used to move along the racetrack, buy new dice, and use abilities. But watch out their speedy McFast dice, because pushing one's luck by rolling too much could cause them to bust. Chaz and I recently sat down with each other to find out more about why each of the other picked this game. This game was designed by John D. Clare, one of my favorite designers. You tell me he designed a game and I'll pretty much instantly want to play it. What if the theme is about trying to poison your co-workers with shellfish? Wait, is that why you bought me shrimp scampi for lunch? Withdrawn. Also, I love rolling dice and pushing my luck to try to win a race, especially when it's combined with deck building, or in this case, dice pool building. And all these factors together make this game a must play for me. What about you, Chaz? I was drawn to the cheese illustration on the box. Finally, something we agree on. And that's the games that are on our collective radar this month. For a list of the games that are gaining popularity with everyone else, watch this month's Momentum Countdown, which tracks the games with the biggest gains in sales, traffic, and online discussion. Follow the link in this video's description to join Watch It Played's Patreon team. Thanks! I'm Paula Deming from Things Get Dicey. This game is broken. And Watch It Played. Bye, y'all.